daily bread A S M R In today's video, I'm going to be reading Bible verses about rocks and more specifically how God is our rock and later on in the video I'm going to be doing some triggers with some rocks that I found the other day and I've already filmed that part and edited it and I think it's very nice so I hope that you enjoy that part and I will leave the timestamps below so that you can check it out and it will be no talking because I figured it would just be better to dedicate time to the Bible verses themselves without having too much sounds in the background with rocks and things so there's two parts to the video and I hope that you do enjoy both of them now I will be reading verses from the New and the Old Testament and one of the things that I find so fascinating is that in the Old Testament, Yahweh is referred to as the rock and in the New Testament, it's Jesus who's referred to the rock as the rock and I just find that so beautiful that we can even see the scriptures pointing to Jesus as part of the Godhead, as the Trinitarian nature of our God. So, I'm going to be reading from my phone. I have all the Bible verses and kind of notes that I want to read. So if you see me looking down, that's why. I'm actually really excited for this video and my heart rate is up. I can't believe it. Okay. Anyways, let's begin. Why is God compared? second to think about it. Well, God is rock-like in that he is unchanging, ancient, solid, protective, secure, immovable, and something that we can stand upon with confidence and one of the first places, not the very first place, but one of the most impactful for me where God is mentioned as the rock is in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and this contains the song of Moses which is in verses 1 through 43 of chapter 32. Moses was living his last days of life, and God told him to write this song and to teach it to the people. A major theme of this song is God's faithfulness. He is called the rock for times. In this song, in verses 15, 18, and verses 31, 30, and 31, even as God's people are chasing whims and trusting false gods, Yahweh remains their steadfast, unchanging source of salvation. I'm going to read 
read to you the first four verses of Moses' song. Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 4. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Isn't that beautiful? So, let me read to you some other verses that are found in the Old Testament. First Samuel 2, verse 2. There is no one as holy as the Lord, for there is no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Second Samuel chapter 22 verses 1 to 4 And David spoke to the Lord the words of this song. On the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. We have a couple others that are in Second Samuel. Later on in chapter 2 is verse 32, which says, For who is God besides the Lord? Who is a rock besides our God? For who is God besides the Lord? Who is a rock besides our God? Later on, in verse 47, it says, The Lord lives, blessed be my rock, exalted be God, the rock of my salvation. The rock of my salvation. If you read through the book of Psalms, you can get an even more expansive picture of God being our rock. I'm going to read to you some verses from the book of Psalms, and I want you to notice how often they pair together the words rock and salvation. Rock and salvation. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 62 verse 2, He alone is my rock and my salvation. 
my fortress where I will never be shaken. Psalm 95 verse 1 Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. And Psalm 89 verse 26 You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The scripture cries out for us to recognize the heavenly perspective. Our life on earth shall pass away, but our life in Christ is eternal. The salvation God offers is as immovable as a rock, as a boulder, as a mountain. It is eternal, just like his word. Our salvation through Jesus Christ is the rock that can never be taken away. I got that from a website link it below if you want to read that article. Now, there are a lot of other verses in the Old Testament that mention God being a rock, but I think what I just mentioned about the salvation of Jesus Christ being like a rock and that it is immovable and eternal will give us a good segue into reading New Testament scriptures. Jesus being the rock. As Christians, it is very common to hear the saying that Jesus Christ is our solid rock. Jesus and his teachings are a solid foundation. We first read this in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 27 where Jesus speaks of building your life on the solid rock. I'll read this passage to you. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that and it fell, and great was the fall of it. A parallel passage of that story is in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. It says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Now, I'm going to jump back to the Old Testament very briefly, but because it ends up actually showing up in Romans. And in 1 
First Peter and other places. So, in Isaiah 28, verse 16, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. I'm not sure what translation that was, but I don't think it's the ESV. I did copy a lot of these straight off the internet, so they might be from different translations. Anyways, try to remember what I just said as I read Romans 9, verses 30 through 33. This is written by Paul. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it? That is a righteousness that is by faith? But that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written. And this is where it references Isaiah 28, verse 16. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. You can see something very similar in 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 4 through 10. I could just read a simple verse, but I think it's better to get the whole context. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 through 10. As you come to him, a living stone, he's talking about Jesus, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. That was also referencing the Old Testament. I'm not completely sure which verses though. Continuing, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Scripture describes Jesus as the chief cornerstone of our faith. As the chief cornerstone, Jesus ensures the stability of the whole system of our salvation. 
Jesus was and is the only plan of salvation. And simultaneously, Jesus is referred to as the stumbling stone because he came to his own people, the Israelites, and instead of embracing him, they stumbled over him and ultimately nailed him to the cross. But the good news is that we can receive mercy, for ultimately we all put Jesus on the cross, for we have all sinned. But God in his love has allowed us to believe on the Lord Jesus with faith, to repent in our sins, and to trust in the finished work of Christ on the cross. He has given us a free gift of salvation and mercy. And how could you deny it? It is precious. It is beautiful. God is the rock upon which we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And that's a reference to him. It wasn't spoken perfectly correctly, but I'm sure you guys know what him I'm talking about. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So, I hope that you can find comfort in the fact that God is so much greater than we could ever imagine, even though he is compared to a rock. He's even stronger, even more firm of a foundation than a rock, than a boulder. That is just a mere comparison. And it's not an exact equality of the two, but it's the closest thing we can get to in trying to describe how secure of a refuge God is. He loves you. He wants to be your friend. Go read John 15 where it talks about what it means to be the friend of Jesus. And do a further study of what it means to be a follower of God the Rock. I hope that this reading of scriptures has helped you, and I do hope that you enjoy the next part of the video, and you don't have to like it. I know some people don't like triggers, um, but I had fun making it, so if you like it, let me know, and God bless you guys.